Good evening, everybody. No, 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 I didn't hear you. Good evening, everybody. Say hi. Thank you. Thank you. I, I want to say, first off, I think this is a very special and important day for me and also for TEDx because the fact that we're here in Fulani talking to young people um, speaks a lot to what the potential of what ideas can do and how we can begin to serve communities. I'm going to go away from what I had prepared in terms of my speech. I must say that it's a little bit academic and um, I'm always very cautious of trying to, to, to not lose my audience and not lose the, the people that I'm talking to. So I'm going to rephrase my presentation. I'm going to talk about a couple of key ideas. The first one is the notion of democracy. How many of you here have voted before? Did it feel good? What changed? Not much. This isn't a political rally, but I want to try and demonstrate the relationship between design and democracy. And how, when societies begin to evolve, when you give people the right to choose and cast a ballot, how does that begin to influence and impact on their daily lives? And how does something like design actually make decisions for you that you haven't even thought about? As an architect, it took me quite a long while to discover and understand why Cape Town is so divided as a city. The fact that we have townships that are far away from the city center, the fact that it seems that affluent people seem to stay in certain areas, the fact that certain schools seem to get more resources, the fact that we don't seem to interrelate, we do very different things in the public spaces in the townships versus the public spaces in the city. And I began to question myself, with why do we have this sort of structure, this type of way of interacting which prevents us from mo really moving forward? And it's not just a question of a legislated past. It's not purely about apartheid laws or colonialism. It boils down to how the city was designed. To when designers decided where people would stay and where they would not stay. To where people said this is the transport that they will use and that they will not use to saying that there's certain areas which are very vulnerable to flooding, so we will put the poorer people to stay there. And the places which have wonderful views and are much more accessible, different people will stay there. I began to understand as an architect and an urban planner that a lot of the problems that we have today, yes, they're partly because of uh, very strict laws which we're still living with the legacy of, but it actually boils down to how people use design to separate and affect people. And I say this particularly because I want to ensure that at least my role here today is to say that when we talk about design, that we don't just think of it in terms of making the city pretty or having nice objects or nice cars. And then we say, but what is the point of design in the township? Or what is the point of design in my community? In fact, I would argue that design is most important in these particular areas. I got lost coming here because the street signage was not clear. That is a conscious and almost deliberate act of under-designing. It is difficult to get out into this area. How safe is it to walk here at night or elsewhere? Are the libraries open after 8 o'clock? Can you study in the evening? Do you feel safe on the weekend? What is it like to be a young lady in this town? And I think if you begin to ask these sorts of questions of yourselves, Yes, there's a political imperative and you can look at the politicians, but I do believe that our answers to these questions don't only reside in the political space, but it's about the physical environments that we live in. And that is why education is so important and that is why ideas are so important. That is what makes the school significant. But what we need to do in order to transform this country, to make design relevant for us and to allow us to be better citizens, to understand and appreciate our democracy much, much better, we need to be far much more critical about how our physical environments are designed and how they work for us. And this is not just an abstract statement. If you look at other cities that we admire or other places that we watch on TV, the type of parks that we want to imagine ourselves playing in as kids, all of those things were consciously designed 
Somebody sat down and drew and conceptualized this thing. The clothes on your back were designed, your shoes, the street, the car, the pen in your hands, the shape of this room. Now Cape Town is going for World Design Capital bid in the year 2014. And we've been shortlisted as one of three cities in the world. And it's very interesting to see whether we will win it. If we win it, I'll tell you right now, it's not because of how good our design is. Because the other cities, Bilbao and I uh, forget the other one, um, yes, uh, have a, exactly Dublin, have uh, larger economies. They've been able to invest far much more in the environmental uh, setups. They have better schools, they have better public spaces, they have better streets. But the thing that will probably make us win, if we do win it, is that if we get that award, it will demonstrate to our government the power of design to change people's lives. And if we are awarded that status, it will therefore mean that there's an opportunity for us to really transform the city from one which is so divided in terms of those who have and those who do not have and say, how do we reconnect the city? So when we talk about the BRT or the stadium or the soccer or the World Cup or all these sorts of infrastructure or roads or housing and plumbing, sometimes I think the temptation is to see these things as just simple things. We just want transport, we just want this. We're not really asking the question, how do those interventions make a more sustainable community for ourselves? How do we actually really design our transport infrastructure so that it can make sense for all of us? A lot of us who live outside of the, the city center or far from work spend up to 30% of our time and our money either sitting in a taxi or waiting in a taxi rank. Now, we're living in a world where time is money. We cannot afford as a society to find ourselves consistently waiting for transport. Or when transport is late, that your boss is angry at you and you begin to lose your job because you're not seem to be reliable. I know what it's like to rely on taxis. It's a nightmare, even though they're necessary. The same goes with trains. The same goes with buses. So what I want to leave you people with, you young people today, is when we talk about fighting for your democratic rights, fighting for all that you can be, I don't want you to just think it purely in terms of voting in the ballot box and assuming that one can legislate your freedom and your sense of democracy. What you need to do is to argue for a better environment in which you live so that that vote translates into direct design implications. We need to demand more of our local, provincial, and national government. We need to demand more of ourselves. We need to start making communities in which we consciously design a better future for ourselves. And I say this particularly because for a long time, people didn't even think design was necessary. It was seen as a frivolous thing for the rich. It was seen as something that is totally irrelevant. If you think of the amount of houses post-1994 that we boasted that we had built, that now have to be repaired today. If you think of the RDP houses, it was because it was built at a time when design was seen to be irrelevant. And it's only now that we're beginning to realize that when you build houses, you're actually building community. That the spaces between the houses need to be wide enough so that if there's a fire, the other house doesn't burn. That there needs to be a route so that emergency vehicles can go through. That there needs to be parks and public places where the children can play safely. So the numbers game of saying that one has made X amount of units, X amount of kilometers of road, doesn't really boil down to the real issue of are we making an environment that is better for ourselves and what is the role of design in that? But I also would like to argue that it's not just the physical environment, but design is how you think about problems. It's your attitude to dealing with... Okay. okay. It's your attitude to dealing with adversity. So very often, if you look at how organizations and institutions, whether they are schools or government or whatever sort of authority, the ones which often are the most innovative in terms of solving their problems, they actually use design and design thinking to solve their challenges. So I don't want you to think design is purely about making objects, making space, making structure. Design is an attitude to understanding your world. It's about taking things which seem to be very different, seem, things which seem to be complex, irreconcilable, and being creative in terms of how you address them. 
And I have a sincere belief that we as a people are endowed. What is required from us is to unlost, unleash our ability to think out of the box, to demand and say that there's a better solution to do this, to not accept mediocrity, to not think that okay is okay. And your generation will be the generation that will make things better for the ones to come. Because quite frankly, the generation that preceded you and the one that preceded me, they played their role, but they have not done enough. And if this generation here ignores the role of design, then we will continue to create environments which are not conducive to ourselves. We will continue to create laws and ways of making decisions that actually don't help people on the ground. We will continue to not be creative about a problem which was actually created by very creative, but admittedly evil people. We have inherited a structure that has been designed. It is not by accident that we are here in this space, that the demographics of the country are the way that it is. It was designed. So if you want to get to a better future, education and a whole range of other things are important, but you must consciously not accept your current condition. That is design. Design is taking what you have right now and saying, how do I make it better? From something as simple as a sidewalk, to a school, to a park, to a street, to your whole life. Use design and you will change your lives for yourselves and for others. I thank you.